full-time work and pushing his career forward with uh, standard batteries. Despite looking after the entire medical, uh, everything that Amma needed medically, uh, and despite uh, also spending time on his own art and everything, he has been an amazing role model of a father because he, he managed to still spend quality time with me. The course of life was changed forever, but not the spirit of the couple. In the beginning, it was difficult. Fortunately, she never went through a, a depression. She, there was sorrow, but a stage came in which she came out of it and then she accepted it and decided that she is not going to moan or mope or cry about it and how to lead as happy a life as possible. Their hearts began to beat for a different tune. If Mahima could not move, Manu started losing his vision. Rain or shine, their bond got strengthened. For Manoha, Life with Mahima was like walking through the woods. A stage came in which suddenly I lost the central vision in my right eye. Uh, I had vision only in one eye. And it, there was a fear that I, the same thing may happen in the other eye. What to do, you know, I, I needed a job because, you know, uh, her own medical expenses were high. And whether I lose my job, you know, what to do. These kinds of very serious uh, financial problems and emotional problems were there. Then um, she said, because you enjoy art, why don't you do artwork during all your spare time? Then I said, how about reading? And then she said, I will do the reading for you. And so she started uh, reading books for me, which turned out wonderfully. In the sense, I after my lost my vision in one eye and considerably reduced vision in the other, my reading shot up because Mahima sat next to me and read. What more, my artistic creativity also shot up. Never before did I produce this much of artwork. She used to read till about 12 o'clock in the night. Then after that I used to, audio book had just come then. And any friend who came from, in those days it, they were not available in India. Any friend who came from abroad, they asked what do you want. We never asked for chocolates or, or, or the usual stuff. We always asked for audio books. And after she goes to bed, I used to listen to the audio books and, and do artwork. So we, we continued to be productive. The true love they had for each other made them stand firm in their lives. Their love for each other was unfettered, free, boundless and divine. Mahima was always a giving person. She used to call it the art of giving. And we wanted to do things in a way we could, you know, legitimize and formalize the art of giving in a more systematic way. So we had dreams like that. In the midst of their joy, they made a promise to always strive to practice what Mahima called the art of giving. Manoha's avatar as a full-fledged artist coincided with the loss of his vision due to retinitis pigmentosa. On Mahima's insistence, back from his arduous work in the factory, their evenings and nights were bustling with his painstaking painting activities in Indian ink. Because of his condition, Manoha has no color perception. In this picture, you know, the, the thalamus of the, of the big open lotus, I, I, put, I put a... a uh, you know, put to so that I know where the center of the flower is. Then wherever I work, this, uh, this is a roving putu. Wherever I work, I keep on moving this putu so that I will know where I work. Otherwise, if I take my eyes off, by the time I research and find the location where I do, then I'll be wasting, you know, one, one, two, three minutes. He has acute tunnel vision and the little he does see is as if seen through a pinhole. Yet, his drawings are flawless, sharp-edged, breathtaking reproductions of snapshots from his life. This is the one I'm doing in color. 
Uh, here, because it's ink drying, the temple is still black. But when you do it in watercolor, I can make the temple, uh, you know, uh, very light so that it will convey the idea of the distance. Uh, so this is what I am at attempting. I just started on the, on the roof of the, one, of the house. I put a, yeah, okay. See, now I'm able to, as soon as I touch the boat, I know where the roof is. So this is a, uh, this roving boat will keep on moving uh, in whichever place I work. I'll slowly work. Now, the people, I have drawn only their faces uh, because I keep waiting because my level of vision of my eye is not constant. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. So when it becomes better, that's the time I will do the difficult bits. So I have done only the faces of the people. When I did the faces of the people, I, I, you know, I had to stop and do something else. So I'm waiting to, for my vision to improve. Then I'll, I'll, I'll put the, the people, the boy who is walking and the woman who is buying some mangoes and all that sort of thing. His dedication and perseverance go far beyond the ordinary. He had used special eye drops to dilate his pupils super strong lights and special magnifiers. With his photographic memory and uncompromising attention to detail, he made all the drawings. This was my very first book, Greenwell Years, recapturing the kind of life we had at Madre during my, uh, my boyhood. So this was my first book. It received very good reviews. This was released in 1997. Then I always admired Mahima and because, you know, she, ha she received a, you know, a very bad deal in life. So I wanted to compensate it emotionally. So I decided to write a book, a sequel to Greenwell Years, which I call, you know, A Poem to Courage, which is a title uh, a, a, a woman called Geeta Doctor gave. Uh, uh, wrote, when she wrote about Mahima, she called her she called her a poem to carry, so which I used as the title of this book. This is a sequel to Greenwell Years. It's also it's a biographical in, in nature, which is a biographical novel, not a not not a biography. In 2007, uh, exactly 10 years after I, almost to the date, after I released uh, Greenwell Years, and Mahima participated in, and this book also received wonderful wonderful uh, reception, and um, and Hindu put a whole page article on, on, on this book. Then, you know, Kannadasan's uh, uh, son, uh, you know, who, who runs a printing uh, press, you know, Gandhi Kannadasan, uh, in his father's name, and he's a very successful publisher. He wanted to publish Greenwell Years in Tamil because he thought it should be, you know, people, more people would read about, about this book. And so we translated it, you know, with, with, the, with the help of a, a, another writer. And we released uh, this book. This is the last book that was released. This is, uh, yeah, if I remember the name, he changed it to Another Madurai in Nenevahal. This is the book that, that Kannadasan public, publication published. His creativity got unleashed in the form of four books with a colorful memory.